I, I think you're creating a little bit of panic. What he was basically saying is not dissimilar to the Dan Campbell. He's saying, look, we've got to handle what's in front of us. We may not be in this position next year. Nobody's guaranteed this position. So we need to take advantage. I think he's lighting a fire. I mean, do you really think he's just saying, well, shucks, guys. I, Does that light a fire to you, year. Jeff? No, the re- when, when you're a team right no, now, it's in a, hold on. When you're a team right now, it's in a position right now where you're outside the playoffs looking in. You have to win out to, to, to guarantee that you'll have your spot. You're likely having to win three of the next four games just to even have a chance to play in the playoffs. And then to say that, yeah, next year could be the same thing. We're lucky to be in the position we're in. And that's lighting a fire. Well, now con- consider what Gator at the beginning of the year they were. They, you know, the the expectation was they were borderline playoff, right? And then they went on this sixteen and four run, and everybody, you know, said, "Oh my gosh, they're probably the best team," and you know, nobody wants to play them. And they had their slide. So I need. I think we need to understand that this is exactly where everybody expected them to be. And he's saying, "Look, we have, you know, nobody expected us to be here." We're in a position to do this. We don't, won't necessarily be here next year. We're not guaranteed that spot, in other words. So we need to take advantage of it now. No, I know. You're, and you're, you're reading hey, your, your, your words are the same thing that Alone said, and I still don't feel inspired by it. I, I, I'm getting upset. You listen to, <laughs> when, when you listen to Villar's update, he just said, you know, you look at, listen to that quote in conjunction where he says, hey, we've got a chance against Pittsburgh. We have to take care of everything in front of us. And that's all he's trying to do. Well, that's a different topic. Yeah, that's a different topic. Maybe it's a poor choice of words. Maybe it is making a big deal out of nothing. I I tend to think that we are very careful and and try not to do that. But you could be right. There's one person that that quote he needs to be accountable to, and that's Steve Eisenman. And if he and Eisenman are on the same page and he says, no, that's not what I meant. What I was trying to say is, you know, we need to relish this opportunity because – you're you're nothing in life is guaranteed. So when you have an opportunity like this, you've got to seize it. And maybe, maybe that's a better way to, he could have put it. Um, but uh, short of that, I don't know what else to say other than I don't like the quote. Yeah. I get that. They want to seize the opportunity right now, but I'm alarmed about next year and, and how that quote's portrayed. I have the quote here. If you guys want to hear it from the, Oh, from do the you have the actual yeah. soundbite? So do you know what the question was or no? No, I just have the... Uh, all, right, the all right, here we go. Then uh, Let's play. It. Yeah. I still don't like it. <laughs> was I there? And, I, and it like it just blew... Because it, was that after the Washington game where he was speaking? Because I was in the room when he did. And it like completely was a nothing quote. Like didn't nobody in the room went, whoa, what did he just say? I don't know if we're all just mesmerized by... Like, they just lost and we're just, you know, listening to, you know, gibberish after a game. But I was part of the group that was there that nobody said anything. Nobody had to follow up. Like, wait, hold on. What'd you say? When was that put in the, sy- in the system, Kang? Was that yesterday or was that Tuesday? No, we just put it in now because oh, we had okay. to go get it. All right. Oh, sorry. We got calls in just to make sure that we are being hearing this the right way. I Yeah, they better be there next year. They, they better not be playing games like this next year. Right? They, they kind of have sure to be. I sure hope not. Healthy and into the postseason. I mean, I'd like to know you the position that, that sounds, Tampa Bay is in right now. It, yes, it sounds as though part of the context is we might be able to get in this year with fewer points than we thought. And if we have this amount of points next year, we won't be. I, I don't think this will get it done on a year in year out basis. Eighty eight mid eighties points. Like they're what eighty four points. He said he'd been setting the goal at 96 to get in. And if his point is, this is a low total to try and get in, we won't be in this chase next year if we have this total. That could make more sense. I just don't, I just don't like reading it, hearing it. Um, but I understand what you're saying. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. And like I said, well, I we was haven't in, been. <laughs> no, we haven't been. And I was in the room after the game, so I – I was there for that, and I didn't have the takeaway that I'm having now. So maybe it's unfair. Because the context, in the context, maybe it all made sense at the time. I don't know. It's just kind of a blur. Uh, Craig is next on 971. Hi, Craig. Hey, guys. How you doing? Thank What's you for up? taking my call. Uh, sure. I just jumped in the car. Uh, kid's sick, so I'm dealing with that. But, man, I just I just wanted to add this. I think 
the way Lalone approaches this team, I mean, you got a, you got a group of guys in there trying to fight their butts off. And you're coming out and you're going like, yeah, maybe, you know, we shouldn't even be here. Like, we're, we're just, we're lucky to be here. We, we weren't supposed to be here. Like, that, that, come on, man. Like, you got to step up and say, hey, we will do this. We're going to do X, Y, and Z. We're going to do the, you know, like, we're going to get it done. Like, we just can't have this. this. This sends a loser mentality message. And he said it after that seven or eight game losing streak. Like, oh, well, we're, we're just lucky. We're lucky to be in this spot. We're lucky to be. It's like. No, you earned this by you got here because you have talent. You add Kane, you add these guys like what you're just sending the message. Am I wrong with that? Like I just I whenever I well, hear him I, talk like that, it's... I I know that the the feeling after they lost the game uh to Washington. I know that the feeling that, that that the players had and that he had and that felt like the whole media had afterwards was this was a missed opportunity against Washington and these are games that they have to win to get into the playoffs. And I think that's kind of what, what everybody was feeling that despite that this quote is out there, it's, it's, they know that they, they have to be better. And they, they made mistakes that they can't make. They were catastrophic that led to goals. They, they know that they made mistakes because they had opportunities with wide open nets and they couldn't put the puck in it. They outplayed the Washington Capitals on Tuesday night thoroughly and didn't come away 100%. with the win. And that's, what's frustrating is that they're playing good hockey right now and it's not showing up with points. Yeah, yeah, I know, and I and I, I guess maybe just from like a coaching point, like I, I want, I, I guess maybe I just want a bulldog, you know, I want a guy kind of like your Dan Campbell, like you know what, damn it, we're good enough, you know, like we're good, like we're a good team, <laughs> like I'm not hearing that, I'm hearing like we're lucky to be, like that, that's where I'm at. Yeah, you know? no, I, I, I feel, just, I feel it. I, it, it, it. Can Dan Campbell skate? <laughs> um, I mean, I would love to have a Dan Campbell type coach. Hell yeah. You know, it's the positive reinforcement that gets you to want to run through that wall and protect this team and, and not berate players. You know, there are plenty of coaches that get out there and get in people's faces, the Mike Keenan types, you know, and right. uh, the, 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 those stars burn bright, but they burn they burn quickly yeah. and they wear themselves out and they're out of town after a couple of years, move on to the next guy. John Tortorella, I think, is another guy like kind of like that. You know, but to have a guy like, like Dan Campbell, that's fire and brimstone, but is there in a positive way to motivate the players? It seems like those guys are few and far between, and I'm not sure how much, how long of a shelf life those guys have either. Maybe this is why Lalone's been asking for Campbell to come out there. He can't do it himself. He's like, "Hey, man, could you please?" Are you doing a solid. Yeah, go out there and talk to the guys. Well, there are guys that aren't great at the pregame speech. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give you one. Jim Harbaugh wasn't great at the pregame speech. He's just awkward. Ben Herbert. The strength and conditioning guy, it's. I think it's why he wanted him in L.A. I. This is my opinion. I think he wanted him in L.A. not to get the guys in shape because Ben Herbert makes him run through a wall. When I was preparing for the national championship game, I went to some people that were there for sort of some of the pregame stuff, and I said, was there anything in the locker room or anything that was said back at the hotel on the way? And they said, well, Ben Herbert said, and I used Ben Herbert's stuff on the broadcast because the strength and conditioning guy in Michigan – was considered elite at pregame speech stuff. Harbaugh, not quite as good. <laughs> well, the speech is one thing. The in-game management is another. Uh, and, and to keep the guys playing at a high rate, like I said, they played well, but it hasn't resulted in a win.